In the previous sessions, we have learned about the techniques of general linear modeling and linear mixed models for longitudinal data. Also, we have only considered the uh, responses to be continuous. In the following two sessions, we would be dealing with the technique of marginal modeling for longitudinal data. The focus of mod marginal modeling is to relate the or is to model the mean of the responses with the available covariates. So, what happens here is that the mean modeling is done treating the covariance models to be a nuisance. So, both the mean and the covariance is modeled, but the covariance model is one is treated as a nu nuisance. So, the modeling technique is such that whatever estimates one gets for the mean model becomes consistent for a misspecified correlation structure. Now, marginal modeling does not depend on the likelihood method, rather it constructs unbiased estimating functions or unbiased estimating equations called generalized estimating equations to estimate the model parameters. Since it avoids the likelihood procedure, it is a popular choice for those studies where the responses are not continuous, but are discrete like binary or counts. Marginal models for longitudinal data analysis 1. The objective of this session is to introduce to marginal models. Well, we have already introduced marginal models. Here, we would be seeing the marginal models from a marginal modeling perspective. Then, we would see what is the formulation of marginal models. And finally, how to estimate the parameters of a marginal model through generalized estimating equations. Now, recall that we have the general linear model of the form y equal to x beta plus epsilon, where epsilon follows normal 0 v. Now, here this model specifies the marginal mean that is expectation of y is equal to x beta and the marginal variance having the correlation structure v y is equal to v. Now, assume that alpha denotes the parameter in v that is v can be written as v alpha, then the log likelihood can be written as L beta alpha equal to minus n by 2 log 2 pi minus half log absolute v minus half log determinant of v alpha minus half y minus x beta transpose v alpha inverse y minus x beta. Now, let u alpha be d d alpha of v alpha and u i alpha is the ith element of v i alpha, the derivative of the ith element of v i alpha that is d d alpha of v i alpha. So, we have the two score equations s beta and s alpha. Note that both the score equations are functions of beta and alpha and the score equations are of the above form. So, s beta and s alpha, so the score both of the score equations are estimating equations for beta and alpha. Note that the score equations are unbiased. So, that is the first property that the score equations are unbiased. That means, both the expectations is equal to 0 and the score equations produce consistent estimators, but this is under certain regularity conditions. The score equations are efficient and that is because the variance gives the features information matrix. Now, this is the general idea about the marginal models, normal the general linear models that we have done. But the question is, what if v is misspecified 
then we still have beta hat is equal to x prime w inverse x inverse x prime w inverse y where w is the working correlation matrix. So, even if v is misspecified as w the unbiasedness of beta does not change. So, beta hat is still unbiased, but the efficiency changes because now covariance of beta hat is not our formal x transpose w inverse x inverse x transpose w inverse x rather than it is the form which is mentioned here. So, it is a it is a bit of a long form, but it comes out to be x transpose w inverse x inverse x transpose w inverse v w inverse x x transpose w inverse x inverse. And obviously, we would get that form the moment we have w inverse is equal to or w equal to v inverse and so the middle part goes away and we have that form of the general linear model form. But it can be shown that if we replace this v i by the variance the sample variance covariance matrix that is y i minus x beta hat y i minus x beta hat transpose we get an estimate of the covariance and this estimate of the covariance is consistent estimator. Now, this is the idea that is if w is a reasonable approximation of v we do not lose much. So, if alpha is the parameter of interest the consistency of covariance beta hat hat that is the estimator of covariance beta hat hat is not of any help, but if the mean parameter beta is our focus then we can use the consistency property of the estimator of covariance of beta to full use and this is precisely what we do uh, in marginal models when we extend it to the case of generalized linear models. So, that is the reason why marginal models are appropriate if the focus is on population average parameters. So, if we are dealing with a cross sectional data then marginal model is the thing that we do whether it is the general linear model or it is uh, whether we are using a general linear model for a continuous uh, outcome or generalized linear models for categorical outcomes, it is the marginal modeling that we do for cross sectional data. Now, the aim of the marginal model is to model the mean of the response variable in terms of the covariates. And for a longitudinal data, this thing is performed while keeping in mind the longitudinal correlation structure. So, just to highlight the points that we would be that makes marginal model so special is that in marginal or population average models the emphasis is to model the mean res response as a function of covariate. So, the emphasis is on the mean modeling, but keeping in mind that the data comes from a longitudinal experiment or a longitudinal design. So, to do that what happens is marginal model separately models the mean response. So, that is for the functional modeling of the mean and the covariates while treating the within subject correlation as nuisance. So, it, it does not ignore the within subject correlation. The within subject correlation is the feature of the longitudinal data and marginal models does not ignore it, but keeps it treating as a nuisance and marginal models are not likelihood based procedures. So, as we can see later we would be using estimating equations for estimation of parameters. So, we would construct unbiased estimating functions and the popular choice because it is free of the likelihood. So, it is a popular choice of analyzing discrete responses where working with the likelihood is a bit complicated. So, what happens in marginal model basically for a marginal model in context to longitudinal data the marginal mean expectation of y i j given x i j equal to mu i j 
is related to x i j by a known link function g of mu i j which is equal to neta i j which is equal to x i j transpose beta. So, the correlation model is also modeled as phi of v i mu i j and the correlation model has the variance as I said phi of v i mu i j and there is a correlation which is y i j y i k given x i j and that is rho i j k. So, the covariance of y i given x i can be written as v i phi alpha and this can be represented as phi c i to the power half r i c i to the power half where r i is the correlation matrix that is the correlation matrix with the i k or rather the j k element is rho i j k here and c i is the diagonal matrix of element elements with diagonals coming from the variance of y i j given x i j. So, that is the phi v i mu i j part and this phi is the scale parameter for variance and alpha characterizes the variance as we had said earlier. So, for continuous response what happens? Let us take specific cases for continuous response this is homogeneous variance over time and so this has a exchangeable correlation structure. So, we are assuming that the variances are homogeneous over time and the correlation structure is exchangeable. So, mu i j is equal to neta i j equal to x i j transpose beta. So, that means there is an identity link here and variance of y i j given x i j is equal phi correlation of y i j y i k given x i j is equal to alpha that is equal to rho. So, rho because it is an exchangeable structure. For the binary the correlation model still remains the same that is correlation of y i j y i k given x i j is alpha and log it mu i j is equal to neta i j equal to x i j transpose beta, but this. So, here is a log it transformation. So, variance of y i j given x i j is mu i j into 1 minus mu i j that is the variance of the binomial distribution. For count that is a Poisson distribution with over dispersion that means the phi element would be here and we have an exchangeable correlation structures variance comes out to be phi mu i j while correlation of y i j y i k given x i j is alpha. But now the transformation is log mu i j that is what we do for Poisson regression and that is equal to neta i j equal to x i j transpose beta. So, for the linear models or the general linear models, we use the multivariate normal distribution along with the first two moments to specify the likelihood. In the GLM family, the problem is that the construction of likelihood is difficult as one has to make additional assumptions on higher order moments. An alternative of the full likelihood function is called the generalized estimating equations and this is nothing but a multivariate analog of the quasi Poisson functions score functions for GLM. So, what happens is that assuming phi and alpha is known beta is estimated from the estimating equations i equal to 1 to m d i v i inverse y i minus mu i beta equal to 0. So, when d where d i is the first derivative with respect to the kth element that is delta mu i j divided by uh, derivative of mu i j with respect to beta k and and v i phi alpha beta is the term which we had described earlier that is phi c i to the power half r i alpha c i to the power half where v i is the working covariance matrix r i alpha is the working correlation matrix. So, now we are both taking a working covariance matrix as well as a working correlation matrix. Now, we use an iterative algorithm to find the estimates An initial estimate of beta comes from the ordinary least square. So, we assume an identity and fit the ordinary least squares and we use method of moments to estimate phi and alpha. This method of moment estimates are then plugged in to find an initial estimate of v i and these three steps are repeated. So, 
till one gets convergence and this is done using Fisher scoring algorithm to update the parameters estimates till convergence. Now, here we have also used R i alpha which is the working correlation. Now, if R i alpha is misspecified we have already told this that beta hat is still consistent and asymptotically normal, but note that here the focus is on estimating beta hat rather than on estimating alpha. So, replacing alpha by any consistent estimator does not affect the large sample properties of beta hat because beta hat is consistent to whatever choice of alpha it is. Then the question comes is why we should be bothering about alpha? Well, we should not technically, but a correlation structure that closely approximates the true correlation improves the efficiency. So, it reduces the variances or the standard errors and for mo moderate correlation if alpha if the correlation is moderate and if the correlation between the observations is not too high then a working independence model is fine I mean for that whatever I mean a exchangeable or a working independence model is fine. For misspecified R i alphas now empirical estimate of the standard errors that is resulting in empirical variance or sandwich variance which we have learned in our weighted least squares should be used, but for correctly specified R i alphas one should use the model based standard errors of beta. Now, for inference in marginal models the inference for beta can proceed using the asymptotic normality and the sandwich or the robust covariance matrix. So, we can assume that the betas are asymptotically normal with variance to be either the sandwich estimator or the robust empiry uh, in the model based estimators that is the robust covariance matrix and inference for alpha is not advisable because primarily here alpha the working correlation structure is chosen to support estimation of beta. If the working correlation structure is chosen for estimation of alpha that means R i alpha is really close or the working correlation matrix R i alpha is really close to the true correlation matrix then inferences about alpha can be taken, but in most situations the aim is to model or to support estimation of beta that is why we take any estimator in any working correlation matrix and the entire method has been specified for or entire method has been developed for the support of estimation of beta. So, in, in marginal models it is advisable not to use inferences regarding alpha. In this session we have learned the ideas about marginal modeling. We have learned how to construct a marginal model and have seen that the marginal model for discrete data is nothing but an extension of the generalized linear models in context to longitudinal data. Marginal model treats the covariance parameters as a nuisance and uses something called generalized estimating equations to estimate the model parameters. In the following session, we would be using the R package GEE to fit marginal models. So, particularly we would be using two data sets, one is the our known data set the Caesar data which has count as its response and another data called the crossover data which comes from a crossover trial and has binary response as its output. So, we would be modeling both the count response as well as binary response in a marginal model framework in the next session.